नमस्कार वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल आर व्यूवर्स एंड लर्नर्स इन दिस लाइव फॉर इन सेशन ऑफ सी आई टी एंड सी आर टी आई एम रेणु भट्ट विद यू ऑल एंड यू आर लाइव विद अस ऑन पी एम ई विद यर चैनल नंबर टेन एंड ऑन आर एन सी आर टी ऑफिशियल यूट्यूब चैनल डियर लर्नर्स एंड व्यूवर्स इन दिस स्पेसिफिक सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न मोर अबाउट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी एंड दिस सेशन इज फॉर साइंस स्टूडेंट टेंथ स्टैंडर्ड साइंस स्टूडेंट एंड वी ऑल आर अवेयर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बट फॉर मोर डिटेल्स वी हैव आर एक्सपर्ट विद अस लेट्स मीट हिम यू आर मिस्टर आई के गोगिया यू आर रिटायर्ड पीजीटी फिजिक्स फ्रॉम केंद्रीय विद्यालय संगठन वेरी वॉम वेलकम सर नमस्कार और बच्चों अगर आपके मन में कोई भी क्वेरी आए कोई सवाल है या फिर कुछ जानना चाहते हैं इफ़ यू हैव एनी डाउट्स फील फ्री टू कनेक्ट टू अस यू कैन कॉल अस ऑन आर टेलीफोन नंबर डैट इज डबल एट डबल जीरो डबल फोर जीरो डबल फाइव नाइन इधर यू कैन ड्रॉप अ मेल एट आर ई मेल एड्रेस डैट इज टी टी एच डॉट क्लास टेंथ एट द रेट सी आई टी डॉट एन आई सी डॉट आई एन और आप इन दोनों माध्यम से हमसे जुड़ सकते हैं अपने सभी सवालों के साथ अपनी सभी क्वेरीज के साथ सो वी आर वेटिंग फॉर योर पार्टिसिपेशन बिकॉज दिस सेशन इज स्पेशली फॉर यू सो बाय द टाइम आर लर्नर्स हमें ज्वाइन करते हैं आई एल कम टू यू एंड हम आपसे रिक्वेस्ट करेंगे कि आप हमारे सभी बच्चों को बताएं वॉट एग्जैक्टली इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इज हम इसके इंट्रोडक्शन से सही सेशन शुरू करना चाहेंगे electricity dear friends is something which we all know and it doesn't need any specific introduction you know that life without electricity cannot be thought of today once the electricity is not available to us all practically all activities in life come to a stand still so that is the Uh, basic importance of electricity in our life and as you we proceed with the lesson you will know what is electricity what is electric current and how do we produce electric current right so so shall we begin the session sure in today's lesson you will be learning about the electric current the electric circuit the electric potential and potential difference these two terms we have to stress upon the circuit elements which are used in electric circuits and circuit diagrams we will also learn about ohm's law the law which governs the value of current in the circuit as stated earlier the electricity plays a very vital role in our day to day life it's a very convenient form of energy convenient because we can easily transform electrical energy to other forms of energy this as a as some examples you have electric to heat we make use of electric heaters electric iron electric geyser all these devices they transform electric energy to heat energy then electric to light you have two examples on your screen the electric lamp and television electric to mechanical we make use of motors to make our life easier fans etc electric to sound again television is one example and radio receiver is yet another electric energy to chemical energy when we charge a battery we consume electrical energy and that electrical energy is transformed and stored in the battery as chemical energy for our use at a later stage now as you have seen that with the help of the examples that there is a very easy transformation of electric energy to all other forms that is what is making our life easier and we make use of electric energy in homes schools hospitals industrial activities etc in today's lesson we will attempt to explore what constitutes electricity what is the cause of flow of electric current in an electric circuit we'll also study the factors which help us to control or regulate or increase or decrease the electric current in a circuit depending on our needs because some devices are heavy devices they will be requiring larger current so you need to increase the current and vice versa we sometimes have to decrease the electric current 
So there will be, we'll be talking about the controlling devices. Current, we are familiar with this term like air current, water current. So current in a way refers to some sort of flow. We talk out about water current and rivers. Here in our context of electric current, the electric current refers to the flow of electric charge. The electric charge in electric circuits is made to pass through metallic wires and it causes a number of effects like heating effect, mechanical effect, etc. to which we put to use to make our life easier in a number of devices. In torch or a battery, the cells placed in proper order provide flow of charges or electric current which help a torch lamp to glow. We get light only when the switch is in on position. The function of the switch is to make a conducting link between source of current, say a cell and the bulb. So what is an electric circuit? We will study this. A continuous and closed path. Remember, closed path. If the path is broken, the current doesn't flow. A continuous and closed path of an electric current is called an electric circuit. If the circuit is broken at any point or the switch is in the off position, the flow of current stops and the bulb does not flow anymore. Let's give a mathematical meaning to the term electric current. The electric current is expressed as the amount of charge flowing through a particular area in a unit time. Simply put, it is the rate of flow of charge with time. In metallic wires, the electrons constitute the flow of charges. Interestingly, when electricity was discovered and put to use, electrons had not been discovered. So the electric current was considered to be due to the flow of positive charges alone. Conventionally, the direction of electric current is taken to be same as the direction of motion of positive charges. This you can see, we have a diagrammatic representation. You have a positive charge on your screen. The arrow shows the direction of motion of the positive charge. So flow of positive charge is from left to right. Current also, the direction is taken to be from left to right, same as that of motion of the positive charge. This is direction of current same as that of flow of the positive charge. In metals, the current flows due to motion of the electrons. But the electrons have been assigned negative charge. They carry negative charge. So the electrons flow in a direction opposite to the conventional direction of the electric current. As you can see in this diagram, this negative charge symbolizes an electron and the direction of flow is marked on your screen from left to right. Now here, if you see the direction of current, the current is in opposite direction, right to left. So direction of current and direction of motion of electrons, they are opposite because the electrons carry negative charge. I repeat, it needs to be emphasized the direction of electric current is taken as opposite to direction of flow of electrons, which are negatively charged particles. The SI unit of electric current is ampere. One ampere is the current through a conductor if one coulomb charge passes through any cross-section of the conductor in one second. 
So 1 ampere we can write in short as 1 coulomb per second. However, we require smaller units also. One of the smaller units is milliampere which is one thousandth of an ampere and we write one milliampere equal to ten to the power minus three ampere. We have another small unit microampere which is one millionth of an ampere denoted by one mu second. Mu is a Greek symbol for ten to the power minus six ampere. Here we have a figure which is a schematic diagram of a typical lactic circuit. As you can see it comprises of a cell, a source of current, an electric bulb, an ammeter and a plug key K. The ammeter attached in the circuit is used to measure electric current. It is always connected in series in a circuit through which the current is to be measured. Series means end to end. It will come in the circuit and whatever current passes throughout the circuit, it is same when the devices are connected in the series. Means series combination is offering only a single path for flow of the current. To measure it, we make use of ammeter as stated earlier. In an electric circuit, conventionally, the direction of electric current is taken from the positive terminal of the cell or battery to its negative terminal as marked by the arrows in the circuit diagram. Here are a few recap problems for you. What does an electric circuit mean? Define SI unit of electric current, ampere you know, you need to define it. Calculate the number of electrons which constitute one Coulomb charge. Charge on one electron is already given to you, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 Coulomb. You need to take the number of electrons as n, n into charge on an electron you can take as one Coulomb and then you can that easily calculate the number of electrons. You have another problem here. A current of 500 milliampere flows through a conductor for 30 seconds. Calculate the total charge passed through the conductor and the number of electrons transferred across any section of the conductor. Now we come to next important point. How to make the electric charge flow in a circuit? Because current electricity means charges need to flow. If they flow, they will carry out the assigned job of producing light energy or mechanical energy. How can we make electric charge flow in a particular circuit? For the purpose, let us consider an analogy of flow of water. We know that if we have a horizontal pipe, water cannot flow on its own through the pipe. However, if one end of the tube is connected to a water tank kept at a higher level, pressure difference is generated by gravity from higher level towards the lower level and that is what makes water flow out of the tube. So, flow of water, for flow of water through a pipe, you need pressure difference or level difference. Similarly, the charges do not flow in a copper wire by themselves. Here, even the gravity has no role to play. The electrons will, water moves with the help of gravitational force, but through a wire, the electrons do not move because of the gravitational force. For flow of charges in a conducting wire, we need the electrons to move. So for the purpose, we need to have a potential difference, which loosely can be referred to as electric pressure. So 
technically we call it potential difference if there is a potential difference across the ends of a conductor only then the current will flow through the conductor now how to generate that potential difference or electric pressure the difference of potential difference may be produced by a battery the battery has chemicals in it the chemical energy of the battery helps to generate a potential difference we can also generate potential difference with the help of the electric generators or solar cells as stated the chemical action within the cell generated generates the potential difference across the terminals of the cell even when no current is drawn so this is an interesting point even when no current is drawn from the cell potential difference will be there means we have the conditions to make the current flow but there is another requirement essential requirement for current to flow you need to have a complete circuit with various conducting parts that is when the current will begin to flow remember two conditions potential difference and a conducting path complete conducting path the potential difference generated by the cell or the electric generator will set the charges in motion which that results in flow of electric current for the purpose of flow of current we require some source of energy if you probe in an electric cell the chemical energy makes the current to flow in a generator mechanical energy which we use to rotate the generator is the source of electrical energy so electrical energy cannot be produced on its own you need to spend one type of energy in order to generate the other type of energy we know that an electric circuit shown in the figure above had a cell a battery a plug and electric component that is electric lamp in addition to that we have connecting wires which connect various components in the circuit in order to draw an electric circuit we need to represent the elements or components in the circuit for the purpose we have designed a few symbols here in this circuit you you can see a battery a key an ammeter and a bulb now the conventional symbols used to represent all these circuit elements are here a list of components an electric cell a battery or a combination of cells the plug key the switch may be open or closed for both cases we have different symbols a wire joint a wire crossing without joint these are the corresponding symbols you can see remember and draw these symbols because you will be needing these symbols of the cell the battery open circuit closed circuit wire joints etc to complete the circuits there are some more components the electric bulb a resistor a variable resistors ammeter voltmeter and the corresponding symbols you can see on your screen now bulb fixed resistors variable resistors which is also known as rheostat an ammeter and a voltmeter they are symbolically represented as shown in the last two uh, cells of the table now we come to ohm's law which is basic law governing the magnitude of electric current let's explore a relation between the potential difference across a conductor and the current which passes through the conductor for the purpose we have this circuit you 
must be recognizing various components in this uh, circuit. They are the battery, you have four cells in it. The blue dotted line shows that you can use one, two, three, or all the four cells. You have a micro wire R connected between terminals X and Y, an ammeter and a voltmeter. Watch carefully, the ammeter is in series and the voltmeter is connected in parallel across the device or resistance R. We also have a key to switch on or switch off the current. You have to set up this circuit as shown in the diagram. We will be using only one cell initially. Note the current I in the ammeter and potential difference V across XY using the voltmeter. Record the values in the table. You will be getting the table in the subsequent screen. You have to record the values of current and potential difference. Take out the key from the plug after measuring the current. Then you have to repeat by using two cells at a time. And record, you will be getting a different value of current and potential difference. Again, take out the key after measuring the current and recording the potential difference. We have to repeat the above steps using three cells and four cells at a time. Now, one interesting question, why should the key be taken out every time? We'll answer it in the concluding part of the lesson. Remember, every time you record the current, you are supposed to switch off the current by taking out the key. This is the relevant table in which you can record number of cells, they are in the second column, current, the potential difference, and finally you have to calculate the ratio V to I, that is potential difference, is to be divided by current in each of the rows. You'll observe that this ratio V to I always remains a constant. This is what is Ohm's law. You'll have it on your screen. The VI graph, graph between V and I, comes out to be a straight line. As you can see, potential difference is plotted along Y axis and current along the horizontal or X axis. The graph is a straight line. This graph is, has been drawn for wire XY, the nichrome wire. The straight line graph is an indication that if you increase the potential difference, the current also increases in the same ratio. Sir, that is, here, let me tell you that we have yeah. only five more minutes left for this session, sir. Yes, please. So here we come to this, this uh, experiment leads us to the law, the potential difference V across the ends of a conductor or metallic wire is directly proportional to the current flowing through it, provided the temperature remains the same. Now, I want to emphasize this uh, last statement, temperature remains the same. You know that when current is passed through a device or a wire, its temperature rises. In such a case, Ohm's law will no longer be valid. That is why it was emphasized that every time you record the value of current and potential difference, you need to take out the key. So that the wire is not heated up. If the wire is heated up, the ratio V over I will no more remain constant. Now, to sum up what we have learned today, a stream of electrons moving through a conductor constitutes an electric current. Conventionally, the direction of current is taken to be opposite to the direction of flow of the electrons. The SI unit of electric current is ampere. To set the electrons in motion in an electric circuit, we use a cell or a battery. 
A cell generates a potential difference that is the essential condition for current or electrons to flow. The potential difference is measured by a voltmeter and the unit is volt. The resistance is a property that opposes the flow of electrons in a conductor. It controls the magnitude of current. Higher resistance implies lesser current and vice versa. That is if the resistance is, has a lower value, the current in the circuit will be more. The SI unit of resistance is ohm and the symbol used is Greek letter omega in the bracket. Ohm's law, the potential difference across the ends of a resistor is directly proportional to the current passing through it provided the temperature remains constant. Let me take a minute to emphasize the conditions under which Ohm's law is valid. Ohm's law is valid only when the temperature remains constant. Number two, it is valid only for metallic conductors. Fine, sir. Thank you so very much for your detailed information on uh, electricity. And that uh, session was for 10th Standard Science students. And thank you so very much, sir, for being with us, sir. Thank you, sir. And Dear learners and viewers, it's time for us to go for a break. We are going break for a short break. After a break, we will be here with our own live session, which we will be here with Sanskrit 10th Standard students. Don't forget to subscribe to PMA Vidya channel. Now, I will give you a radio. Jazzat Namaskar.